I can't agree with this part of your interpretation. For the good reason that the weapon is now in my hand. I imagined something of this sort would happen when I made the slip tonight about knowing Edwards. That started your agile young mind going. You were having a breakdown. And in a state of panic, you heard that Edwards was to take your place here. So you sought him out in his favorite restaurant where he was lunching with John Valentine. You accused him of stealing your job. You threatened to kill him. He calmed you down, told you he was off on a skiing vacation. You followed him there and shot him from behind a tree. That's enough. Your story is ridiculous. You make a fool of yourself. A love-smitten analyst playing a dream detective? There'll be no dreams for the police. They'll find out from the waiters in the 21 club that you were there. You'll be identified as the man who had a row with Upper Edwards. There will be people who saw you on the train to Gabriel Valley who saw you there. There'll be no dreams necessary for this case. I see. You're an excellent analyst, Dr. Peterson, but a rather stupid woman. What did you think I'd do when you told me all this? Congratulate you? You forget in your imbecilic devotion to your patient that the punishment for two murders is the same as for one. You're not going to commit a second murder, Dr. Murchison. I hadn't planned to, but you're here. You're not leaving. A man with your intelligence does not commit a stupid murder. You're thinking you are not mentally responsible for that other crime in the snow. They'll find extenuating circumstances in the state of your health. They'll not execute you for the death of Dr. Edwards. You can still live, read, write, research. Even if you are put away, you're thinking that now, Dr. Murchison. If you shoot now, it is cold, deliberate murder. You will be tried as a sane murderer. Convicted as a sane man. And killed in the electric chair for your crime. I'm going to telephone the police now, Dr. Murchison. 